Welcome to our captivating journey into the intricate web of love, scandal, and royalty. Today, we delve deep into the compelling saga of Anthony Armstrong Jones, a man whose life epitomized both the heights of triumph and the depths of tragedy. From his humble beginnings to his meteoric rise into the stratosphere of the royal family, Anthony's story is one of undeniable intrigue and undeniable charm. By subscribing to our channel, you will never miss the following exciting videos. Become a part of our ever-growing community of history lovers. Though not born into aristocracy, Anthony Armstrong Jones's lineage exuded nothing short of upper-class elegance. With a barrister father and a socialite mother, it appeared he was destined for the idyllic childhood shared by many of similar societal stature. Yet fate had its own agenda. Lessons in relationships often stem from parental influences, and just shy of his fifth birthday, young Anthony received a pivotal lesson that would color his future romantic endeavors. This was the time of his parents' divorce. Anthony and his elder sister found themselves under their mother's care, who swiftly found a new husband. In a matter of months, Anthony gained a stepfather, just one of many seismic shifts to come. While his father's prestigious career as a barrister lent an air of nobility, his mother's remarriage elevated them further. Her new spouse was Lawrence Parsons, the sixth Earl of Ross. Antony now found himself integrated into noble lineage, a significant status in 1930s England. Nonetheless, his mother and stepfather failed to treat him with the reverence accorded to royalty. His mother bore two children with Parsons, leading Antony to feel overshadowed by his half-siblings. After all, he lacked the noble lineage they boasted, yet his tumultuous upbringing was far from over. Antony's familial foundation crumbled before his eyes, but darker times lay ahead. Stricken with polio during a Welsh vacation, he endured six months confined to the Liverpool Royal Infirmary. Hospitalization alone was trying, but the absence of his immediate family compounded his distress. Throughout his ordeal, only his sister graced him with a visit, while neither his newly wedded mother nor father bothered. A harsh blow to an already wounded spirit Following his recovery, Antony's parents didn't reintegrate into his life with grandeur. Instead, they dispatched him to various boarding schools. Amidst these institutions, including Eton, he embraced pursuits like photography, boxing, and rowing, all while bearing the physical reminder of his polio battle, a lingering limp. Though estranged from his stepfamily, he navigated England's most esteemed educational institutions, ultimately landing at its renowned university. Anthony Armstrong Jones ventured forth to Cambridge University, yet once more, destiny diverged from his designs, a recurring motif in his life's narrative. Spending a brief stint studying natural history, he swiftly redirected his focus toward architecture. Initial success suggested he had found his calling, until failure in his second-year examinations altered the trajectory of his life entirely. Despite encouragement from other family members, Antony found his typically reserved parents growing even more disapproving when he expressed interest in pursuing a career in photography. He felt adrift, lacking a clear direction, and struggling to find his place. Matters worsened when he experienced his first significant romantic setback. Smitten with Lady Barbara North, Antony's affections were spurned in favor of a more prosperous suitor. Three months later, he found himself photographing their wedding, a poignant reminder of his missed opportunity. Determined not to let such chances slip through his fingers again, he resolved to seize the next opportunity that presented itself. Initially embracing photography as a pastime, Armstrong Jones leveraged his privileged upbringing, noble stepfamily, and prestigious education to forge connections in high society. Throughout the 1950s, he established his reputation through capturing fashion trends and immortalizing stage luminaries in his portraits all while indulging in the lavish lifestyle his success afforded him. Anthony Armstrong Jones mastered the art of blending business with pleasure. Openly hosting photo shoots with captivating young women in his Pimlico Road studio, he extended invitations for them to partake in the spirited soirees that followed. Yet more scandalous rumors soon swirled around him. With a circle rich in gay acquaintances, tales of his liaisons with men lingered for years. Despite reveling in hedonistic pursuits, he remained focused on his professional ambitions. Having conquered realms of fashion, theater, and studio photography, Antony set his sights on capturing royal portraiture. 
Serendipitously positioned, he secured the coveted opportunity to photograph Queen Elizabeth II's family. Though his unconventional approach raised eyebrows, the Queen lauded his work. In that moment, the dashing and debonair young photographer appeared a welcomed addition to their inner circle. However, as events would unfold, they would later rue their proximity to him. With his fame and proximity to royalty mounting, Antony mastered the art of safeguarding his personal affairs from prying eyes. Adroitly polite and charming, he remained tight-lipped about his romantic entanglements. The lone exception was his sporadic relationship with showgirl Jackie Chan, which provided ample fodder for gossip columnists. By the late 1950s, however, he employed her as a cover for a far more scandalous liaison. While nearly a household name in Britain, Antony Armstrong Jones harbored a weighty secret. What commenced as a friendship with Princess Margaret, the Queen's sister, evolved into something deeper. The situation teetered on the precipice of peril. Margaret, fresh from a highly publicized split with her former fiancé, Captain Peter Townsend, navigated a tumultuous period in her life. Princess Margaret's existence stood in stark contrast to Antony's at that juncture. While he grappled with familial neglect and career uncertainties, Margaret wrestled with the pressures of constant public scrutiny, a factor that contributed to the demise of her previous romance, leaving her profoundly heartbroken. While publicly appearing together in group settings, the princess relished clandestine rendezvous with Antony, seeking his counsel on his ongoing projects. However, scarce opportunities for private encounters put a damper on their affair. Yet, having learned from her previous romantic missteps, both Margaret and the royal family were resolute in safeguarding her relationship with Antony Armstrong Jones from the prying eyes of the press. However, as the adage goes, the best laid plans often go awry. Despite the royal family's determination to approach this relationship differently from Princess Margaret's previous liaison, Antony faced a significant ultimatum, sacrifice his career for marriage to Margaret. Undeterred, he began discreetly disentangling himself from professional obligations long before the press caught wind of their romance. While London society was acquainted with his photographic prowess, the global stage was about to be introduced to Anthony Armstrong Jones. Catching everyone off guard, a 1960 press release announced the engagement of Princess Margaret and Anthony Armstrong Jones, eliciting widespread jubilation, with one notable exception. Antony's father responded with characteristic aloofness, expressing doubts about his son's suitability for the role and likening his temporary abode in Buckingham Palace to military confinement. Wedding preparations commenced swiftly, yet not without complications. Antony selected Jeremy Fry, a longtime friend, as his best man, only for a disconcerting revelation to emerge during the court's background check. Fry had been apprehended soliciting another man in a public restroom, hastily buried by the palace, the scandal foreshadowed further turbulence for the Union. Overcoming these hurdles, Antony Armstrong Jones wed Princess Margaret on May 6, 1960, in a grand ceremony. Marking a historic milestone, their nuptials became the first royal wedding televised. 20 million viewers tuned in as 2,000 guests celebrated the occasion. Then ensued the honeymoon, a respite from relentless scrutiny. The newlyweds found reprieve from public scrutiny during their six-week Caribbean honeymoon, missing various events, including the birth of Jeremy Fry's child, a detail that would later resurface to haunt Antony. Yet for the moment, it appeared they were on course for a fairy tale ending. However, upon their return home, a harsh reality awaited. Traditionalist factions of the British press disapproved of the union between the princess and a commoner like Antony. Their disdain was echoed by others, manifesting in snobbery from all quarters, including within the royal household, where some servants spurned him for his perceived lack of noble pedigree. Particularly troublesome was his butler, whose disdain became increasingly apparent. Settling into 10 Kensington Palace alongside Princess Margaret, Antony swiftly assembled a household staff, but their butler's tenure lasted a mere 25 days. Seizing the opportunity, the press descended upon Antony's former butler like scavengers, eager for salacious details about the newlywed's domestic life. He willingly obliged, painting a disparaging portrait of his time with the couple. Regrettably for Antony, minor skirmishes with the royal family ensued, exacerbating tensions with one prominent figure in particular. Prince Philip had always regarded Antony with a cool demeanor, but post-marriage, 
his demeanor soured further. While Antony exuded artistic sensitivity, Philip epitomized rugged outdoor pursuits. Under the relentless glare of the press and the weight of forsaking his career, Antony found himself under mounting pressure. It was only a matter of time before fissures appeared. Within months, Princess Margaret announced her pregnancy with the couple's first child. In anticipation of the birth, Antony accepted the royal title of Earl of Snowdon, a decision met with rare approval from his mother. Their son arrived in November 1961, yet both Antony and Margaret struggled to embrace parenthood wholeheartedly. Following their firstborn's arrival, Antony and Margaret embarked on another Caribbean excursion. Upon their return, Antony grappled with finding an appointment that would appease both his in-laws and his artistic inclinations. As familial and marital tensions simmered, Margaret found solace in alcohol, her interests waning. Once the darling of the press, Margaret now faced their vitriol, with Antony bearing the brunt of their accusations. While their interests diverged, Antony and Princess Margaret found common ground amidst the fervor of swinging London in the early 1960s. Engaging with Vogue's elite circle, Antony rubbed shoulders with luminaries, while Margaret forged friendships with celebrities like the Beatles and Peter Sellers. Estranged from their families save for official engagements, they cultivated new social circles, drifting from old friends. In 1964, Princess Margaret welcomed their second child, a daughter named Sarah, marking four years of marriage and the illusion of familial bliss. However, their fairy tale would soon unravel into a harrowing ordeal. By 1965, the strains of royal life had taken their toll on Antony, prompting a desperate need for respite. Planning a trip with a publishing confidant, Antony sought refuge, but ominous undercurrents shadowed their excursion. Palace assertions cited Princess Margaret's unavailability to accompany Antony on his trip, purportedly due to royal obligations requiring her presence. Yet, the truth veiled a clandestine affair. Antony increasingly devoted his time to Pamela Collin, a married Vogue editor, their liaisons extending beyond professional boundaries, shattering the facade of marital harmony. Rather than succumbing to despair, Princess Margaret opted to retaliate against her husband's infidelity with ruthless vengeance. Initiating an affair with her daughter's godfather, Anthony Barton, and fostering closeness with actor Peter Sellers, she embarked on a spree of dalliances. While their celebrity status rendered anything beyond flirtation implausible, Princess Margaret's thirst for retribution remained unquenched. Whispers of liaisons with renowned figures such as Mick Jagger, Warren Beatty, and Leslie Hutchison abounded, with few substantiated. Some, however, etched themselves into historical annals, notably Margaret's entanglement with Robin Douglas Home, nephew of a former prime minister. Swiftly escalating, their affair spiraled into dangerous territory. Tensions peaked when Antony stumbled upon Margaret and Robin conversing at Kensington Palace, their shared abode. Compounded by Robin's decision to divorce his wife, Antony devised a scheme. Intercepting a letter penned by Robin to Margaret, Antony presented it to the Queen Mother, demanding Margaret's severed ties. In doing so, Antony not only rid himself of the interloper, but also deftly shifted blame onto Margaret, potentially affording him leeway in his career and extramarital dalliances. Ultimately acquiescing to Antony's ultimatum, Princess Margaret terminated her involvement with Robin Douglas Home. Though fleeting, their liaison yielded tragic consequences. Just 18 months post-affair, Douglas Home tragically took his own life at the tender age of 36. Was this a wake-up call for Antony or Margaret? Far from it. This marked the genesis of a protracted cycle of infidelity between the couple, descending into acrimony. Antony's penchant for petty reprisals manifested in a list of grievances left for Margaret, including derogatory remarks like, you look like a Jewish manicurist and I hate you. At times, his disdain erupted into public humiliation, disparaging her intelligence amidst social gatherings. While Antony remained unfazed, Margaret's misery deepened. Antony wasn't the sole target of Princess Margaret's ire. As their tumult persisted, the surprising support of the royal family aligned predominantly with Antony. Despite expectations of solidarity with Margaret, Antony's affable demeanor endeared him to their ranks. External allegiances mirrored familial sentiments. Though aware of the marital discord, 
the royal family hoped for a discreet separation to spare themselves embarrassment. While the couple acquiesced, Margaret bore the burden disproportionately, resorting to increased alcohol consumption and public outbursts. Consequently, anti-monarchy sentiment swelled, casting aspersions on the costs of her upkeep, yet repercussions remained elusive. As the swinging 60s waned, infidelity lost its allure, morphing into a mundane fixture of Antony Armstrong Jones and Princess Margaret's existence. Their estrangement burgeoned, leaving reconciliation a distant prospect. Fragile stability teetered on the brink of collapse, be it by age-old grievances or the allure of youthful temptation. During their honeymoon, a friend bestowed upon Antony and Margaret a six-acre expanse on the serene Isle of Mustique in the Caribbean. While Antony had never revisited, Margaret sought solace there amid the tumult of their marriage. It was on this secluded haven that she forged a bond with Roddy Llewellyn, the lackadaisical scion of a renowned British equestrian. Their association, ostensibly platonic, blossomed when he was 25 and she, 43, an affair seemingly indistinguishable from the string of indiscretions preceding it. Yet, this liaison would prove cataclysmic. Infamous media mogul Rupert Murdoch dispatched a New Zealand journalist to Mustique, masquerading as a vacationer with his spouse. During his sojourn, the journalist captured a clandestine image of Margaret and Roddy together. The publication of these photographs served as the coup de grace, not only for Antony and Margaret, but also for the royal family's perception of their frigid, aloof union. Confronted with irrefutable evidence, they could no longer deny the palpable discord, a moment of reckoning long overdue. Meanwhile, Antony immersed himself in documentary filmmaking, forging a close bond with production assistant Lucy Lindsay Hogg. Despite initiating steps toward legal separation, the royal family dragged their feet, a stalling tactic Antony circumvented by unilaterally announcing their separation. With the legal separation formalized, the animosity between Antony and Princess Margaret abated. Though divorce had never been his goal, Antony acquiesced to the palace's unexpected decision. The divorce was finalized in 1978, an eventuality Antony wasted no time capitalizing on. Antony's romance with Lucy Lindsay Hogg had transcended professional boundaries long before the divorce proceedings. His swift remarriage, merely five months after the divorce, caught Margaret off guard. Their union in December 1978, however, was far from a fairy tale ending. Despite shedding the bitterness of his marriage to Princess Margaret, Antony retained some unsavory habits. An extramarital affair with married journalist Anne Hills had commenced during the separation, leaving her stunned by his hasty remarriage to Lucy. Nevertheless, she remained unwilling to relinquish her hold on Antony. While Antony may have reverted to familiar patterns, his dynamic with Lucy differed markedly. With Lucy's unwavering patience and the absence of intense media scrutiny or royal pressures, Antony found contentment. He safeguarded his affair with Anne Hills, opting not to weaponize it against his spouse as he had with Margaret. Instead, Antony channeled his energy into advocacy for the disabled, a cause close to his heart, still bearing the physical remnants of his battle with polio. Despite outward appearances of bliss with Lucy, Antony's clandestine affair with Anne Hills persisted, with dire repercussions. Spanning a staggering two decades, Anne yearned for more from Antony, yet realization dawned that her desires would remain unfulfilled. Despite her dalliances and live-in partners, her heart still pined for Antony's affection. Following her termination from The Guardian in late 1996, Anne Hills, reeling from yet another failed relationship and a solitary Christmas, succumbed to profound despair, taking her own life. In her final missive, she professed enduring love for Antony, requesting the return of a cherished family heirloom he had bestowed upon her. Authorities, upon investigation, uncovered her diaries, chronicling the intimate details of her prolonged liaison with Antony. Subsequently, newspapers splashed the contents of Anne's diaries across their pages, unraveling Antony's long-standing infidelity to his wife Lucy. Devastated, Lucy grappled with the heartbreak while Antony remained callous, offering no solace or explanation. Yet, Anne Hill's revelations merely scratched the surface of Antony's concealed transgressions. Two years subsequent to the exposure of his affair with Anne Hills, Lucy unearthed another shocking revelation. 
Antony had sired a child with magazine editor Melanie Cable Alexander, nearly three decades his junior. Lucy, astute to Antony's deceitful machinations, confronted him, prompting his admission. Struggling to navigate between Lucy and Melanie, Antony found himself unable to satisfy either's desires. Burdened by financial strain exacerbated by supporting multiple households, Antony brokered a £250,000 deal for Melanie's appearance in Hello! magazine. Eventually parting ways with Melanie, Antony's marriage to Lucy dissolved as she initiated divorce proceedings. Undeterred by his advancing age and the debilitating effects of his polio, Antony embarked on numerous dalliances, juggling multiple relationships concurrently. In 2017, Antony Armstrong Jones passed away peacefully at his Kensington residence, aged 86. Interred in the family plot in Wales, he outlived his ex-wife Margaret by 15 years, while Lucy, his other ex-wife, remains alive. Despite their marital dissolution, Lucy remained a steadfast companion in Antony's twilight years, during which many of his scandalous secrets came to light. Antony's dalliances extended beyond heterosexual relationships, fueling speculation regarding his sexual orientation. According to a biographer, Antony purportedly confessed to being bisexual, with assertions from male interior designers claiming romantic liaisons, though evidence remains inconclusive. Amidst Tony and Margaret's tumultuous feud, their actions only exacerbated an already strained relationship. Amidst the tumult of Antony and Princess Margaret's infidelity stalemate, whispers swirled regarding Margaret's alleged liaison with Mick Jagger, the charismatic frontman of the Rolling Stones. However, Antony purportedly sought retribution in his own right, engaging in a purported dalliance with the glamorous Bianca Jagger, Mick's wife. This revelation unveils Antony's penchant for retaliation, hinting at a history of indiscretions far predating public awareness. While the dissolution of Antony Armstrong Jones' marriage to Princess Margaret unfolded publicly, its origins extend far beyond the public eye. Amidst mutual accusations, Antony emerges as the instigator of the marital discord. In a startling revelation in 2004, DNA testing unveiled the existence of an illegitimate daughter conceived during the early days of his union with Margaret. The identity of the child's mother only deepened the scandalous narrative. DNA analysis conducted in 2004 unearthed the paternity of Polly Higson, affirming Antony's parenthood with the child conceived during his honeymoon with Margaret. Yet the scandal intensifies with the revelation that Polly's mother was none other than Camilla Fry, Antony's best friend's wife. Antony's proclivity for indiscretion reaches new heights, painting a scandalous portrait of his romantic entanglements. The hypothetical reaction of Princess Margaret to this revelation remains a subject of speculation shrouded in intrigue.